Okay, Jeff, uh, good morning. And uh, I'm, I'm certainly hoping that uh, after two more, the last two mornings with snow, I'm, I'm sure hoping you can bring us some, some good news this morning. So well, Jeff, welcome and good morning. Good morning, thanks, Paul. Uh, there, there will be some, but we've, we've still, uh, we're still stuck in a, a fairly late winter pattern here rather than uh, the springtime. And the image I've got this morning, I think it uh, says it all for most of the state. This was uh, up in the Upper Peninsula in the Marquette area, who uh, 15 to 20 inches of snow fell with the uh, Easter and uh, Easter Monday uh, storm here last uh, uh, last several days. But a very unusually unusually cold period that we've been through. And and the bottom line is here, uh, looking ahead and, and looking at the forecast, there is some moderation uh, expected, but it's it's going to take a while. It's not going to be an overnight thing. And and thinking about uh, some of of Tim's comments here, it, it probably is going to be a while before we see much appreciable evaporation to help us out. On the positive side, we are looking at, I think, a generally drier than normal pattern here. That that should help uh, a little bit at this time of the year, but I'll I'll talk more about that in a, in a second. We look here uh, at the last week in general, we, uh, well, we've went below normal and mean temperatures. And the, the uh, graphic here on the left shows uh, temperature departures for the, well, the previous week through yesterday. But uh, generally, especially the northern and, and western parts of the state, we, uh, we remained below normal. Uh, in the far east and southeast, uh, you can see at or maybe a degree above normal, so it just depended on where you were. But given the last, uh, the last few days, uh, we've had temperatures at least 20 degrees below where they should be uh, for this time of year. So uh, a, a very, very cold, or an unusually cold period for the middle of April. On the right-hand side are our precipitation totals through the 15th uh, across Michigan, and it really depended on where you were. Uh, much of the state had uh, a half to one inch uh, totals here, uh, with less as you go down towards uh, the south central and southeastern parts of lower Michigan. Uh, and, and there, in many cases, uh, only a quarter, uh, quarter to a half of water equivalent. The exception here statewide, though, uh, up in the Upper Peninsula, where again heavy precipitation fell with the big storm uh, on uh, on Easter uh, and the day afterwards. In some cases, as much more than two inches of water equivalent. Of course, in that case, uh, almost all of it was in frozen form, so uh, a very very winter-like type of uh, of pattern. Uh, a growing degree day accumulations here, given given the recent change or switch towards colder weather. Uh, you can see across the state, this is from the beginning of March and reflects some of our, our annual crops coming out of dormancy here. Uh, but in general, we're a few days, calendar days, behind where we typically are at this time of the year. Uh, a couple of exceptions, the far uh, eastern portion of, of upper Michigan and then very, very southern parts of, of lower Michigan. But again, given the current cold weather, uh, there's going to be a lot more blue on this map, uh, certainly in the next uh, week or two with more below normal temperatures expected uh, to come. Uh, soil temperatures have fallen off uh, fairly drastically from where they were a week ago. Uh, we had actually some, uh, these are two inch bare average temperatures uh, from the uh, Enviro Weather Network. You can see some other meso networks across the Midwest. But in Michigan, we actually in the southern part of the state had gotten up to the mid and even upper 50s here just a, a week ago, but given the recent turn towards colder. Air temperatures, uh, the soil temperatures have fallen off rapidly too. And I would expect, just like the degree days, I would expect to see those fall off even a little bit more, at least in the short term, before, uh, before they change. So where does that leave us here? Uh, this morning, this is our surface map. Uh, more of the same here today with, uh, we, we have a, there's a upper air trough across central and eastern North America with a northerly flow from the high latitudes in the Arctic down through Canada into the upper Midwest in the Great Lakes region. That's, that's where we've been the last couple of days and why we have temperatures that are 15 to 20 degrees below normal. Uh, there are a number of these uh, weak troughing features. You can see that on the map here is this dashed line uh, coming uh, through, spinning around that upper air, uh, upper air trough. And each time one of those goes through, we get a little bit of a invigorated chance for snow showers. And, and that's, that's what you have seen here for the last several days is just uh, repeated snow showers. Uh, they're not uh, they're not very very large, uh, but when sometimes if you're under the right cloud, it, uh, it comes down heavy. 
we've had uh, reports of, well, anything from a whitening of the ground, we've had an inch, a couple inches, but there's not much water equivalent with these. These are, these are generally just hit and miss type of shower activities. There's uh, only, only a few hundredths of an inch typically of water uh, associated with those. And for today, we'll see more of the same. There's actually some uh, in the western part of the lower peninsula and some up in upper Michigan right now. So it's, again, a, a more of a, uh, a repeat performance from the last two days. Although I think today the, uh, the coverage in the snow showers will be a little bit less than it has the last two days. If you look at the map though, you can see a large, uh, this area of low pressure here out over uh, the uh, southwestern part of Kansas getting its act together. That's the next weather system to uh, influence the state and that will begin here late tonight, uh, early Friday morning into tomorrow morning. This system is gonna move through the Ohio Valley just to our south and spread, uh, spread snow because of the, the temperatures aloft are, are, uh, are very, very cold. Right now are abnormally cold. Uh, again, beginning late tonight and then continuing probably for the uh, morning hours tomorrow. And uh, it's, it looks like right now, this will not be the snow shower type of thing that you've seen over the last couple of days. This will be a steady light to maybe a little bit sometimes moderate intensity snowfall primarily for areas south of, uh, of I-96 uh, I, uh, and, and southward toward the Ohio border. Uh, we will see probably accumulations with this. Temperatures are gonna be a little bit marginal, probably down near to slightly below freezing, so it'll be a wet, uh, wet type of snow, but we likely will see a couple of inches of accumulation, one to maybe as much as four inches right along the Indiana and Ohio state lines before it ends. Again, it looks like right now, uh, by the middle of the day tomorrow on the far southeastern corner of the state. And given, again, the air temperatures near freezing, it will be, there will be some, a uh, little bit of slippery travel uh, tomorrow. Uh, but that system should move off then to the east and, uh, and bring in fair and drier conditions for the day on, on Friday. The other thing to note here is too that the core of the coldest air that's affected us or impacted us here over the last couple of days is over us right now. And by tomorrow, and certainly by, by Saturday, we will see a, a noticeable moderation in temperatures into the weekend. So today we're looking primarily at, uh, at 30s for high temperatures across most of the state. We will see sub-freezing temperatures once again tomorrow, and even again overnight Friday uh, into Saturday. But there will be a noticeable increase during the daytime. So uh, most of the state will see high temperatures back up, certainly into the mid upper 40s north uh, to the 50s in the south here this weekend, uh, both Friday and Saturday. In terms of precipitation, I mentioned a relatively dry pattern. That's, that's one of the themes here. And of course, we have the snow to contend with here overnight. But other than that, we will see a chance of showers. Uh, and it could be either rain or snow, depending on where you are in the state, uh, over the weekend, a Saturday or Sunday, but nothing significant, really. It will be scattered. And if it does occur, it'll be light. I think the next best chance of anything organized or significant in terms of area and amounts probably not until uh, the latter part of next work week, maybe late Wednesday or Thursday of next week as, as it looks right now. So we are in a cool and dry period, uh, or it, very, very, I think a good likelihood of that. So again, in terms of, of moisture, that should help given where we've, uh, with all the excess precipitation we've had since last fall. This is the forecast map for conditions here tomorrow morning, eight o'clock, and you can see again, uh, snow as that low pressure moves here. Uh, through what looks like right over the St. Louis area and then off to the east. There will be uh, steady light snow here uh, overnight and that's, that's the system responsible for that. In terms of precipitation for the next week through uh, Wednesday morning, the 20, this is actually Thursday morning, uh, this, this precipitation forecast to uh, the, 20, the 23rd, um, mostly less than a quarter of an inch across. In some cases actually there might be little or no precipitation during the next week, but the heaviest amounts likely down here right along the southern border, and that's associated with the precipitation, the snowfall we expect here tonight. So a, a drier than normal week, that, that should be, again, somewhat helpful given where we are in the season and keeping, uh, keeping the moisture levels uh, low there. On the other hand, the evaporation rates will be very, very limited, uh, probably a few hundredths of an inch of potential evaporation. It's actually, in this case, it's just evaporation uh, this time of the year with, with not much plant uptake yet, but it, uh, that will be limited, but also the amount of water coming in. So that's, that's not a bad, uh, not a bad thing to have this, uh, this time of the year. Looking off into the medium range guidance here, both the six to 10 day and eight to 14 day outlooks are, are almost carbon copies of one another. And if we look at the jet forecast jet stream pattern here for this eight to 14 day timeframe, 
still a split flow jet stream across North America with, uh, with Michigan primarily under the influence of the northern uh, branch of this. And you can see there's still some northwesterly orientation to that, which tends to keep us cooler than normal. But uh, and I, I would say, the more and more I look at this with recent forecast guidance, there are signs from the forecast guidance that to see some moderation in this and to go more to a west to east or zonal flow. And that should lead to moderating temperatures. While our official outlook for both the six to 10 day and 14, eight to 14 day timeframes from NOAA and the Climate Prediction Center here do uh, favor cooler than normal temperatures. This almost goes out through the end of April here, you can see. I think that that probably is more towards the next week. Uh, once we get beyond that, I would not be as surprised to see us get back to, uh, to more near normal. The forecast of the outlook also calls for above both of these normal to above normal precipitation totals. I'm not so sold on that. Uh, usually when we have Northwest flow aloft, if anything, we tend to be a little bit drier uh, than normal. So I'm, I think uh, maybe more normal uh, precipitation totals, if I would have put the, uh, the um, markings on the graphics here, than, than above normal. So again, overall, I think we're looking at a, uh, a still a cool pattern, certainly short term, but with moderation with time. And so summarizing here, again, more, more late winter weather, but we will see significant uh, moderation or noticeable moderation here by this weekend, we've got to deal with uh, one more round of, of snowfall overnight tonight, uh, in the, at least in the southern part of the state. Uh, and besides that, the chance for some scattered showers here or there uh, over this weekend, uh, late Saturday and Sunday, but probably no significant precip again after the snowfall tonight uh, until the middle or latter part of, uh, of next week. So cool and, and dry, but with moderating and noticeable moderation in temperatures. And that's, that's pretty much what the medium range forecast is suggesting. So I'll, I'll stop there and see if, uh, if anyone has any questions. Jeff, what's the long-term outlook for uh, the summer? Thank you for uh, reminding me. Uh, well, the official long-term right now, uh, and if you ask me an hour later, uh, I'd maybe give you a different answer. But the official outlook right now uh, is for warmer and wetter than normal. That's the direction of most of the, for the latter part of the spring, and certainly for at least the first half of the growing season. It's been that for a while. We do not have currently, we're, we're neutral as far as the, uh, the El Nino Southern Oscillation, what's going on in the Pacific. It's expected to remain neutral, at least for the next few months. Uh, but uh, given that, there's, there's little tropical forcing to, to talk about. And so most of our outlooks, those long legal outlooks are based on numerical forecast guidance and, uh, and long-term trends. So we're, there's a couple of the tools that are typically used for that that we don't have right now because we are neutral. But, but that said, uh, the current outlooks are for warmer and wetter. But the big caveat is that we have a new, uh, new issuance. It's, uh, these are updated once per month, and it's, it's actually today. So we'll, the Climate Prediction Center will be releasing a new set of, uh, of guidance, and there may be some changes there. We'll see, but we'll, we'll definitely talk about those next week. But that comes out here around 8.30 or 8.45 uh, this morning. So, uh, but right now, officially, uh, warmer and wetter is is sort of the longer term trajectory. Do we have a good source for estimating soil temperatures given the particular air temperature outlook? Oh, is it possible to to estimate your if you have air temperatures? Well, the uh, the answer, quick answer that answer to that is it yes, it is possible to do that, but it's not very straightforward or not very easy. It depends on the on the texture. The big one is, of course, it depends on how much water is in the soil physically. So yes, that, that can be done. If you're, you're interested in that, that's what, that's what the uh, crop simulation models try or attempt to do, but it, 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 it requires a little bit of, uh, of, of doing and, and sophistication uh, to put all those together, but it, it isn't easy.